were saying, the first thing that you need to do, the first time that you need to do yoga in your day is as soon as you wake up. And how to do that is something that I'm going to demonstrate uh, to you here on my yoga mat. Because I get a lot of queries from people saying, okay, you know, I have to roll out my mat and uh, there's no time in the day and stuff like that. So the first time that you do yoga in the day is on your bed as soon as you wake up. So the, the simple things that you can do are just some stretches. So let's say I've just woken up. And so you're just lying down on your bed. And what you want to do is some, uh, some twists, some yogic twists. So what you do is you just sort of lie down in your bed and you turn to the right. And then you turn to the left. And you hold it. You hold something like this for a long time. Okay. So and until you feel that your whole body is opening up, the sides are opening up, you can actually feel that the whole... Uh, back, which is, you know, compressed throughout the night is actually uh, decompressing itself. Another thing, as soon as you get up in the morning, I know a lot of people like to just sit and kind of think about the day that's going to happen. That's a great habit just to sort of sit on your bed and think about the day that's going to happen. Another thing while you're doing that, another thing that you want to do is sort of interlock your fingers together and take your hands up and make sure like I, I, I can actually see my hands right now. Both hands are stretched evenly out, so I get a stretch on both sides of my body. And that's that. when you do that, you can actually stretch to one side or to the other side. And this is right on your bed as soon as you wake up. So next time I hear anyone calling me in and saying they don't have time to do yoga, I'm going to refer them to this yoganar and tell them that, you know, you can do it right as soon as you wake up. And breathe deeply. Okay, that's another thing that's really important. When you do these, uh, as soon as you wake up, when you're doing yoga, you want to take some fresh oxygen inside that's going to give you a lot of clarity clear, clear your mind and sort of set you uh, set you up for a, a great day uh, a day in which you're going to do a lot of yoga and fitness and also deal with all the you know all the office work and the family issues that you have um and so okay so once you do this next you know what do you do so we advise at healthify me um that you keep yourself hydrated so as soon as you wake up go ahead and drink some water have a snack, like a banana is a great, great thing to have as soon as you wake up. And then start, if you have time, start a long, maybe 45 minute, 60 minute yoga workout. Now, people ask, okay, you know, I want to do yoga, but I don't know what to do. Now, I would say that the best yoga workout, a complete yoga workout consists of uh, a little bit of pranayam. Okay, so just inhaling and exhaling. And that can be done even in your bed. So just, just I, I prefer this uh, mudra called the Nasika mudra, where you take the index finger and middle finger in and use your thumb and your ring finger to sort of block the nostrils when you inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale alternately. Um, so that's one thing that uh, I really like to do. And I think that is something that everyone should have as pranayam in their yoga routine. Okay, another thing that you would want to do um, for your yoga routine is uh, do a lot of Surya Namaskars. Okay, so what the Surya Namaskar does is that it stretches your entire body. Okay, there is no other exercise that I know of which you can do in a series which incorporates about 10 to 12 asanas which stress, stretches your entire body. So not only are you doing something like an inversion, like in the downward dog, which is a part of every Surya Namaskar, uh, you're inverting your body, so a lot of blood is rushing to your head, clearing your thoughts, uh, uh, releasing a lot of toxins in your system. But also, um, you know, it helps in, again, elongating the spine, stretching the back of the legs, strengthening the hands, the fingers, everything basically. You, you start your day with the Surya Namaskar and you, you know what I mean. So another thing um, is, uh, along with the Pranayam, Surya Namaskar and... Um, uh, basic stretching. Okay, pranayam and uh, basic stretching is something else that you want to do. Um, basic stretching is just like a few twists. Um, once you're done with your Surya Namaskar, just do a few uh, twists um, on the mat. Um, you could do a few forward uh, forward folds also, backward bends also. Um, just sort of giving it a, a good kind of um, a good overall uh, uh, rounding of your workout um, would be just to put in a little bit of stretches. And also everyone's favorite asana, the Shavasana. Uh, I really feel that uh, no, no workout routine is complete without the Shavasana. And uh, that's because the Shavasana is not only so that you can fall asleep at the end of the workout. Actually, it's not for that. 
um, the Shavasana gives you time to really get in touch with your body. Like, how does your body feel right now? Um, has the yoga workout been been good for you, useful for you? How did you feel before the workout? How do you feel after the workout? Um, so, so yes, so we're talking about, you know, the kind of workout that you want to do right before you go to office. If you have 45 minutes, this is what I would suggest. Um, Surya Namaskar, uh, Pranayam, stretches, Shavasana, and also you could put in a few weight-bearing exercises. Now, this is generally a term used in gym, but it's also... Uh, if you look at, if you analyze the uh, yogic asanas, like for instance, the plank pose, um, various, uh, 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 you know, variations of the chaturanga or variations of the downward dog, um, you'll see that uh, they, they do uh, have you holding your body weight up, supporting your body weight, engaging your core muscles, engaging your quads, engaging basically every single part of your body to hold the body weight up. And that can be classified as a weight-bearing exercise. So I would suggest that you add a little bit of that also uh, in uh, in your regular yoga routine. And once you're done with this, have a great breakfast. Make sure you do not forget breakfast and then go to work. So if you have, like we announced earlier, if you have any questions about this, just make a note of it and ask us later. So this was what to do as soon as you wake up and before you go to work. Now, once you get to work, and I know 95% or at least 98% of everyone I know who goes to the office has no time to work out. And, and they end up sitting for about even up to three to four to five hours without a break. And sitting is like smoking. It is that bad for your body. So the first thing that I would um, suggest to you as soon as you get to office, take the stairs. Okay, don't take the elevator. Even if you have your laptop uh, with you, just, just take the stairs. That's, that's increasing your metabolism right there. It's working on your core strength. It's working on your lower uh, body. It's just, just, just uh, you know, by climbing the stairs to your office instead of taking the lift, you're doing a, a lot to your body, especially if you're going to be sitting for the next uh, five, six hours, maybe eight hours of the day. So that's one thing. Now, another thing that you should do is for every 30 minutes that you sit, and I suggest I put it up on one of my blogs also, um, every, for every 30 minutes that you're standing up, uh, for every 30 minutes that you're sitting down, stand up for three minutes. And a great way to remember that is just to put a reminder on your phone. I know a lot of people have reminders for uh, drinking water. Uh, you could actually just use the same application to remind you that you should stand up now. It's been 30 minutes, half an hour. Stand up, uh, walk around. If you have to take a call, uh, you know, walk around and take the call. Just that much is enough to burn a few calories and keep your metabolism revved up. Okay. Now, my favorite part, yoga in the office. And I've actually done this for uh, a lot of you who joined this yoginar. They've actually, they actually attended my previous yoginar um, exclusively for people who are in the office. So we got, we have this office chair, which resembles the office chair that a lot of people who are joining us probably use. So most of you are probably hunched over the laptop most for most of the day. And what that does is actually it it messes around with the curvature of your back. Okay. And in yoga, we believe that you are only as healthy as your spine. So if your spine is actually on a daily basis, if your spine is compressing, it's stretched. Um, it's curved forward or curved too far back. That rarely happens, but yes, I have seen cases where that's uh, that's also a problem. You're going to age faster. If any of these, uh, if any, if you fall into any of this category, you're going to age faster, and you're just not going to be able to sit up or even stand up straight. Okay. So the first thing is, you need to sit up straight on your office chair. Most office chairs are ergonomically designed. Actually, most are not ergonomically designed, so you have to actually uh, be very conscious of this. And every 30 minutes when you're standing up, right before standing up, you could do a twist. So something like this. What this does is actually it elevates the entire spine up, opens up the chest as well, allows you to breathe better. And see, I'm not, what you want to make sure is that you're not hunching even when you're twisting. So just open up, open up the chest, push your shoulders back, and really stand, sit tall. This is going to help you in standing tall also. And you can do that on the other side as well. So once again, just twist. 
and hold it for a while. You'll actually feel the back releasing and you might even feel, a lot of you might even feel the, the cracks, you know, on the spine. Your, your spine will actually crack uh, a little more open. Um, and that's just because your spine is just not, just not used to the, the kind of twisting movements, rotation, uh, rotational movements that it's designed uh, to perform. Now, another thing, forward bending, which is great to clear your head and it's great to clear stress from your body. So all you want to do is just sort of lie down like this and allow your head to also just drop down. And just hold that for a little while. A lot of people can't touch their toes, but you know, everyone who's sitting down can actually touch their toes. So that's one thing that uh, you want to make sure um, that, you're, uh, that you're doing in, in the office chair. Another thing, if you have a little bit of space, like I have a little bit of space here. So what you could do is, and if you have a chair with slides like this, so what you could do is actually use, stand with your feet together and use the chair to stretch the back. So you're just sort of stretching the back and using the chair. And as you can see, my body is at a right angle. That's what you want. This is not gonna help you much. You want to stretch out, stretch the arms, stretch the sides of your body, and stretch your shoulder blades, basically upper body and your lower body as well. Um, along with this, you could also try like a half uh, Padmasana. So you're just sort of stretching. This is something that you can do even when you're making notes, taking, attending calls. What this does is opens up the hip joint, which is where a lot of stress is stored. Okay. So if you're unable to do the full Padmasana, which is like this, Okay, I hope this is visible to you guys. So, if you're unable to do the full Padmasana, which is like this, what you want to do is just the half Padmasana. So, on one side and then on the other side. And if you're very adventurous, and this is not planned at all, what you could do is lift yourself up off your chair. And that takes care of your arm strength as well. So these are a few things. I've given you many options. Okay. So these are a few of the things that you have to do every 30 minutes uh, in the office, along with drinking water, having a good snack, um, eating well. Um, these are a few things which will, after your morning workout, these will keep your uh, body open and awake and your mind alert also. Um, okay, so if you have any questions about this, make a note and let me know later. Okay, so, um, and also, okay, so right before you leave for uh, home, a lot of people work late um, and there's a huge, uh, uh, you know, conflict between should I eat at office, should I eat at home, what should I do, I, you know, if I eat in the office then I won't be able to get home to do a workout. The best thing is if you can find um, a yoga class in the office or if you could spend some time in the gym or even if you have a gym in the office, our fitness instructors will give you a workout. Um, our yoga instructors will give you a workout. You could just unroll your mat in the gym, go to the office gym, do your workout, do the workout that the Health of Me trainers have given, uh, given to you, have a snack in the office and then go home. Make a workout a part of your uh, uh, work day instead of something that you do when you once you get home. Okay, so with that, um, we're just going to bring in uh, Shruti, uh, one of our Healthify Me teammates, um, and she's going to let you know a little bit about the great, wonderful things that we have for you in 2016. So over to Shruti. Thank you, Pravya. Um, hi, guys. I'm Shruti. I'm from the marketing team here at Healthify Me. And thank you all so much for joining us in this yoga now. We hope you've been enjoying it. Um, we, I just, I'm just interrupting this for a short while to tell you a little bit more about why we're doing this. Uh, we are running this no fail resolution campaign. So if you've been watching our social media feeds and our emails, you'd have noticed that we're asking you to send us your resolution, take a picture, take a selfie with it, and post it up on your social media pages. On top of that, we have a whole lot of exclusive offers and discounts for you coming up over the next two weeks. Right now, uh, you can use get 20% off all Health of Family premium plans by using NoFail20, that's the discount coupon code. And if you're watching this yoga, um, yoga now right now, we have uh, an exclusive offer for you just for those of you who are watching. Use Yoga30 to get 30% off all our premium plans. Basically, these premium plans will give you access to dedicated coaching from some of our awesome experts that you see in like Pragya 
and Roshni, whom you met earlier. And you can get one-on-one -on -one dedicated coaching from them to help you achieve your fitness and weight loss objectives. Um, these prices start at $6.99 per month. And we hope you get started on your resolution as soon as you can. Um, with that, if you have any questions regarding this yoginar, just type them down in the box below and hit enter. We'll be selecting a couple of questions towards the end of this to answer, to, to have Pragya answer them at the end of this program. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm going to hand this over back to Pragya. She's going to take you through some more uh, yoga asanas. And we hope you enjoy this. Over to you, Pragya. Okay, so now the office chair leaves because you're back at home. And what are the, a few things that you can do uh, once you get home to sort of get yourself uh, in, in the mood to just relax a little bit before you go to bed because um, we believe that health is not only about what you eat and how you move and work out, but we believe that health is also about how you sleep. And uh, if, if you're not sleeping well, or if you're unable to sleep, or um, if you have a very disturbed sleep, lots of uh, bad dreams, nightmares, that is an indication that there is something that, that needs to be looked at. You know, that's not something that you should ignore. Um, if you're waking up every morning tired, um, despite having slept for a long time, that is something that you have to take a look at. Uh, and it's a serious issue because uh, sleep is actually when your body rejuvenates. Uh, sleep is when your body actually, you, when your brain gets that much needed rest. And uh, if it doesn't get that rest, then you know that that's when a lot of psychosomatic issues happen, and and they actually translate into your physical uh, well-being. Into uh, it's detrimental for your physical well-being as well. So, um, so once you come home, um, and let's say you you know you you had a workout in the office, I would say have a snack. Uh, we we um, at Healthify Me don't believe in um, in you know counting calories. We believe that you should, that you should look at the, the quality of the calories that you are taking in, you know. So um, if you're having, uh, you know, when we say have a snack, we don't mean, you know, grab grab some candy or, or a Coke or something. We mean that, you know, you should have uh, maybe a fruit um, or maybe if you're if you're in the South, like we are, uh, maybe a plate of idli or something, something like that, something to keep your metabolism going, something to ensure that your body doesn't go into starvation mode. Um, and once you have uh, a, a light snack, um, then I would suggest that you do some pranayam. Now, there's no better time to do uh, pranayam in the day than at the point at which, you know, all your work is done and, and you're completely free and relaxed. So as um, soon as you come home, uh, go ahead and do pranayam. Now, one pranayam uh, and the one that I use most frequently, I practice most frequently, and I also uh, tell most of my clients is the Anulom Vilom Pranayam, which is again, alternate nostril breathing. Um, if you know, if, if you don't, if you're not comfortable with practicing uh, any kind of Pranayam, another thing that you could do is just deep breathing. So you're inhaling, expanding your chest, expanding your stomach and exhaling and compressing everything. And think happy thoughts, think uh, good thoughts when you do this. Um, breathing is also a process of getting rid of toxins in your system. So the better you breathe, the deeper you breathe, uh, the more, the, the better it is for your body, the, the more you're helping your body in detoxing, um, both emotionally, physically, and mentally. So, um, so I would say, you know, spend maybe 10, 15 minutes on, on pranayam right now, deep breathing. Uh, and after that, you could even meditate. Meditation is really important um, on a daily basis. Even if you just meditate for five minutes, I would say uh, that is time well spent, well, well uh, invested. Um, because I think meditation is the only time in the day when your mind is not thinking, at least you're trying not to think about anything, you know, rather than dwelling on uh, the, the things that have happened throughout the day or the things that are going to happen tomorrow. You just sort of stay in the present moment and try to think and, and try to be with yourself alone. And, um, you know, just get used to not thinking about anything and that really creates that space in your mind and in your day to um, relax and get some respite from the day. Um, and after you do this, then go ahead and have, have some dinner. And after dinner, you can also do some stretches. Okay, so we're assuming um, we're not, we're not, uh, we don't endorse the whole idea of having, you know, dinner at like 10 o'clock and sleeping at one o'clock. What we say um, is that, you know, try to get your dinner done by eight o'clock and that's late. 
Um, most of us here in the office have dinner by 6.30, 7.30, um, and you know, we're usually done by eight o'clock. Um, after that, you could go for a light walk. Um, on your bed, again, you could do uh, a few stretches. You could, again, do a few twists. Um, you could do some stretches um, with your legs, you know, uh, toe touching. Um, you could do the pigeon pose, which is uh, the pose that we used in advertising um, this hangout. Um, and you see me in that pose all over the place. Um, so these are a few things, you know, just, just to sort of open up the hip joint, open up your shoulders and release any, any bit of stress that may still be in your system. Uh, and then turn your gadgets off, drop your phone uh, in the other room, uh, do, do not use any gadgets, don't keep any gadgets or the, even the TV in, in your room. Turn it off, read a little bit, hang out with your, uh, you know, with your spouses, with your children and finally go to sleep. And if you do all of this, if you do pranayam, if you meditate a little bit, have dinner early, um, uh, do a little bit of stretching in the evening, perhaps go for a walk in the evening, I guarantee that you will be in a state of mind, a totally relaxed state of mind, and you will have an awesome sleep. You will sleep for six to eight hours like a baby and wake up refreshed so that the workout that we spoke about uh, at the beginning of this yoginar uh, will get done the next morning. Um, so that is uh, basically it. If you guys have any questions, like uh, I said and Shruti said, that uh, you know, make a note of it and let us know. I'm here to answer all your questions. And um, before I sign off, uh, I'm going to actually hand it over to Shruti. And um, I think she has a few things that she wants to talk to you about. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, so this is the first ever yoga that we did. And I'm so happy that all of you guys attended. And I'm really happy to have done it. And so leave me a comment on our Health Me page, on my Yoga with Pragya page, or you can actually Google any of the trainers that we have uh, at Health Me. All of us are highly qualified, highly trained. Um, we have a web presence. Um, you can call us, download the app, uh, talk to us on uh, on the application. We actually do answer your questions on the application. Um, so yeah, so we are highly accessible to you. Um, we are uh, and 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 we are. 2016 is the year that we are trying to get uh, a lot more uh, feedback from you guys, a lot more interaction going with you guys. So go ahead and. Um, you know, leave us your comments, your questions, and I will hand it okay. over to Shruti. So guys, um, you're free to start asking questions now. If you want to ask anything, you can just post it in the box down below. And uh, we have another 15 to 20 minutes left for this yoga now. And just feel free to ask your questions and Pragya is right here to answer them. Yeah, so I'm still here. So Pragya, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, what, is, what, are, what are your favorite yoga poses for when you're, you know, on a holiday, well, what are, what are some things you do when you're on holiday? Because I think that's one of the things mm. that we, yeah yeah mm. okay. So um, so I really like to stretch, you know, so just just basic stretching. So for instance, um, we could actually show that. Okay, yeah. So stretching um, is really important, you know. Like I I believe that a lot of people they spend a lot of time on cardio or weightlifting, but if you don't stretch, you leave yourself open. Um, to risks of injury. So I'll just show you a few of my stretches that I really like to do. So the first stretch is basically, and this is something that I do every day. Every morning, I, 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 I actually just bend forward and just try, you know, and stretch your legs forward. And then if you can touch your forehead all the way down, that's great. But of course, you know, I mean, not everyone is at this level, but um, just this forward, a forward fold is great because it, what it does is it massages your internal organs, which is great on vacation. It stretches the back of your legs, which is great for vacation because you're walking around so much. And then of course, it, it, this, this particular pose is also gives you a lot of um, relaxation. It, it gives you a lot of relaxation for the brain. Okay. Yeah. And you could do this, you could do it with both legs forward also. So yeah, so this is my favorite. And then of course the pigeon pose, which is my favorite and it's all over the place. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Pragya. And um, I think uh, a lot of our viewers today are, um, there are a lot of women in the in group right now. So I think one of the questions that they may be interested in is, uh, you know, pregnancy yoga, right? So Pragya right here, she does a lot of prenatal, postnatal yoga as well. And uh, maybe you could share some of the stuff that you do that 
it's pretty yeah, popular. Yeah. So we uh, we've actually shared um, you know a couple of videos about uh, pregnancy yeah. uh, yoga on uh, yeah. our uh, yeah on the, the with we collaborated with the health site um, for the you know for these videos, but I think we've, been, we've shared them on the site also. Yeah. So uh, something that's really uh, an asana which is really good um, for pregnant women all trimester is the malasana. So basically you're squatting. Okay. And, you know, either you could keep your hands uh, on the floor or you could just uh, sort of fold your hands in the namaste. But um, this is, uh, you know, this is like the best thing that you can do for pregnant women uh, also, as you can see, this asana creates a lot of space for the belly, um, which is why it can be done all to in all three trimesters. It strengthens the hips. It opens up the hips for, you know, the whole process of a natural delivery, which is what I think nowadays is something which is rare. You know, you get surprised uh, when someone says, okay, I've had a natural uh, delivery. Most, most people have to undergo C-sections and that's, that's not really that great for you. Um, it, it, you know, I, I would always suggest people to sort of keep your body in shape, flexible, opened up so that you can have a healthy and normal delivery process. And this is one key asana um, for that. Um, so I, uh, I would suggest that, uh, you know, anyone who's interested in specific asanas, we've done uh, blogs for specific asanas. Um, uh, and you can just check out the blog, um, uh, the Healthify Me blog. If you go to our website, there's a link for the blog and there, we've actually, uh, we have photos and descriptions of specific asanas. You could actually go over there and take a look at that yeah, along with the video. Okay. Cool. So I think we have a question from yeah. uh, one of our viewers. Yeah. Uh, one of our viewers says he rides the bike every day to work and back and he says I have a very stiff back. So are there, are there any asanas I can do to relieve the stiffness? Lower yes. back stiffness. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now this is a good question and this is a question which is relevant to a lot of people. Okay. So now when, when you talk about the back, okay, the best way to structure a workout for the back is to think about all the four kind of, uh, or maybe six kind of movements. Okay, one is forward bending, one is backward bending, then left side, right side, and also diagonal. So you're bending diagonally. So, so you think about it this way and then structure the workout. So for instance, for forward bending, you could do the move that I showed you earlier for the vacation where you're just trying to touch your toes. So as soon as you get home, hold that for some time. Because it's a step back, it's uh, what's happening is all the vertebrae are just, you know, just sort of uh, compressed, stiff, um, and tight. So when you just hold, when you just fold forward, and even if you're not able to touch your toes, and you just release the upper body, allow gravity to pull it down. Um, you're, you're just, it's, it's a passive stretch, but it is stretching your body forward. In the same way, backward bend. Backward bends are actually considered intermediate poses, so that's not something that I would recommend right now, but there's, there are always workarounds. So as soon as you get home, take a pillow, a hard pillow or a bolster if you have one, and lie down on it. So basically, I would sit like this on my, uh, uh, like on my bed, place a pillow under my back, and then allow my back to roll back. So I, I would roll back on my bed and lie down flat. So what that does is the whole back uh, kind of uh, stretches backward, you know. So you've done a forward fold, you do a backward fold. And then twist. So just this move is really good. When you do this move, remember, especially if you're a bike rider or you drive a, your car a lot, remember to push your abdomen forward. Don't make it a compressed, don't do this. Don't allow your shoulders to sag. Your shoulders must always be open. Okay, do this on the other side. And finally, the last one, which is really easy, is you can place your hand on the floor and stretch out. Really stretch as much as you can. It stretches the entire side of your body, both sides, actually. So yeah, so that's for people, uh, bike riders. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one, of our, one more question. Yeah. We have another viewer who wants to know if it's possible to body build with yoga. Mm. What they can do. Yeah. Okay, so, um, you know, theoretically it is possible. I've never met uh, anyone who uh, is, you know, has gone into bodybuilding with uh, yoga. But yes, I do know of a lot of people who have extremely muscular, yes, like six pack abs through only yoga. I do know a lot of these people. Um, they have extreme 
muscular definition. Their bodies have extreme muscular definitions and they practice only yoga. Some of them are vegan, you know, vegetarian. So yes, theoretically it is possible. Now it all depends on, uh, you know, if you are a bodybuilder and you're looking to build your body through yoga, how much time do you have to spend on that? I mean, obviously the, the way you, you're going to go about it, the kind of routines that you're going to um, be using, implementing is going to be very different than uh, the kind of thing that you would do at the gym. It might take a longer time. It might require a, a, you know, personal attention from someone who would really understand a bodybuilder's body, would understand yoga asanas, and who would combine these two things to uh, give you a routine that, um, uh, that would suit your, your body. So yes, you can theoretically, but it's not something, if you're looking at your end goal is to build your body, to become a bodybuilder, I wouldn't suggest that yoga would be, uh, uh, would be something that you would use to build the body. But yes, a bodybuilder should also do yoga to remain flexible. Otherwise, what happens again is the compression uh, of uh, your ligaments, your muscles, um, your spine, you know, that compression is something that um, you, you can avoid uh, through the use of yoga or through the regular practice of yoga. Okay. Uh, so the questions just started coming in from our users. So thank you to all our uh, viewers right now. Uh, we have one question from Vikas Kumar. He says, Vikas, uh, yeah, I have a question on what type of clothes we should wear for yoga. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, well, <laughs> um, valid question. yeah, it, it is a valid question. So, um, see, I'm, I'm doing this yoga in my jeans and my um, uh, Game of Thrones t-shirt. But, um, okay, if you're going to a yoga class, look at what kind of yoga class it is. If it's one of, uh, if it's, for instance, Ashtang yoga or Iyengar yoga, I would suggest that you, uh, you know, wear uh, something which is not very loose so that your teacher can actually see uh, how your knees are moving, how your thighs are moving. Um, where your ankles are placed because in traditional forms of yoga we are looking at alignment a lot you know um, so if, if you're a woman for instance uh, it's not a good idea to wear a suit like a silver kameez or a sari because you movement is not, not so free um, you know when when uh, when you're wearing these clothes I would suggest that you wear something that you can tuck in you know t-shirts that you can tuck into uh, in your pants um, I would suggest that you don't wear anything that's uh, too short or too small um, because you want to be able to move easily and freely without getting self-conscious. And yes, for classes like uh, Bikram yoga, hot yoga, uh, Ashtang yoga, I would suggest that you use dry fit uh, material. Cotton tends to uh, get heavy as you know, when you sweat, it absorbs the sweat and tends to get very heavy. And uh, that that's not really conducive to easy movement for these kinds of uh, yoga classes. So yeah, so I hope I answered your question. Look at the kind of class you're taking and then accordingly decide what you want to wear. And never ever wear anything which is flowy, flowy, loose, ill-fitting, yeah. Okay, and next question. Any special asanas for spondylitis? Okay. Um, see, uh, an overall yoga routine is really good for spondylitis, but okay. So I would suggest um, something like the downward dog is really good. You really want to, um, Stretch the spine. Okay, the downward dog is really good. Um, you could do um, something like um, uh, you know traction. So there's a blog that we've done with that also. Uh, traction um, for the lower body, which actually stretches the upper body also. Learn how to lift your hands up. Really uh, cultivate strength in the shoulder blades to lift your hands up. Um, so any asana which actually deals with that, you know, lifting the hands up, going forward, okay. downward dog. Um, Neha Jane, one of our viewers, has asked, uh, Prabhya, I'm on my weight loss journey and I have a cellulite problem, especially in my thighs. What are the asanas that would help me in overcoming cellulite? Yeah. Um, so for that, um, okay. So basically what you need to do is tone up your lower body. So I would say uh, things like um, like the Uttatasana, which builds a lot of strength on, on the lower body is really good for you. Um, I would say things like the Virbhadrasana, again, uh, you know, toning the thighs, uh, uh, really uh, activating the thighs uh, with the Virbhadrasana, all, all the variations of the Virbhadrasana, uh, things like balancing poses, the tree pose is great for that, hold it for a longer time, the tree pose is easy for a lot of people, but then you just hold it for a minute, hold it for three minutes, feel the burn, these are the kind of asanas which will help you, um, the Nataraj asana is going to help you. Um, Warrior, all the warrior poses, Nataraj Asana, Utkatasana. These are the poses that you should do um, for the cellulite. Okay. Um, 
The next person has had, uh, I work for, Sujit Balls has Sujit asked, uh, I work for 12 hours every day. Can yoga help me reduce my stress level? Yes, definitely. Um, so um, if, if your workplace has a gym or a quiet place, uh, meditate. Meditate for five minutes. Overall, uh, yoga brings um, a lot of stress. I have, I have, I've actually seen um, uh, people like uh, corporate hotshots, head honchos. Um, they, they start a yoga practice for maybe just two days a week. And they do report a remarkable uh, decrease in stress levels. It will definitely help if you just, for five minutes in your day, just breathe or uh, just meditate or just go for a walk um, and stretch a little bit. Yes, it will definitely uh, help you in, in reducing your stress levels. Uh, from Neha Kogra, we have a question, very interesting one. How old should a child be so that we can like, start them on yoga? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this depends on the child. Okay, so um, they they can actually start uh, yoga movement at you know as soon as they start walking. Um, uh, you know, my my friend recently had a baby, and the baby can touch you know her her toe to her forehead. So um, children, you know, their bodies are opened up, their bodies are um, toxin free, um, they're very flexible, and the sooner they start with yoga asana, uh, the better it is. Now, what I would not recommend for children, or I would not recommend parents to force their children to do, is uh, pranayam practices. A lot of parents think that you know their children have problems focusing, or studying, or concentration. Uh, you know, is a problem for a lot of children. Yes, uh, but pranayam is not the way to go. Um, to to uh, it, it basically uh, when you, when you do that, when you ask children to do pranayam for uh, concentration levels to increase their concentration levels. It just becomes a punishment for them because kids are not designed to sit still and think happy thoughts. Kids are designed to go out, get tired, play, move, twist, bend, all of that. And um, so any any age is good for uh, asana, but pranayam, I would say 16 and above. I wouldn't really recommend pranayam for anyone who's below. Um, Rahul Yadav has asked uh, his Top six bone, which is the tail bone, yeah. is tilted anteriorly, and he's not able to sit for more than 20 minutes in one position. Yeah. yeah. So, what asanas could help him out? Okay. Yeah. Setu Bandhasana is uh, the one that you need to practice, and I would recommend that you get um, props. Get a wooden block. Uh, it is a prop used in Iyengar Yoga. Get a wooden block and do the Setu Bandhasana. That's the bridge pose. You can look it up. Um, and place this block right under the bone. Okay, over it and hold it. Allow your um, legs to relax. Allow the whole, uh, the, the block to, you know, take your body weight. Put all your body weight on the block. Allow it to just come down, your body weight to come down. And eventually after you practice this, maybe daily for 10 minutes, 15 minutes a day, you will see a change that the bone, you know, eventually will even itself out. That's what you need to do. Great. Uh, next question is from Girija Kumari. And she asks if you have any remedy for gastritis. Yeah, Vajrasana. So uh, that's something that I can show you guys. So you can just sort of sit with your feet under your thighs and just sit like this for 15 minutes, um, 10 minutes, 15 minutes every day. Now, um, as easy as it looks, it's not really, uh, it, it's not easy for everyone. So for a lot of people, if you have a problem with the, the ankles, Put a pillow under underneath uh, you. Uh, you know, sit on a pillow. If you have problems with the knees, place uh, roll up a towel and place it right behind your knees, under your knees, and then sit to create space in the knee joint. So yeah, the Vajrasana is the, the your short short way of dealing with uh, gastric problems. Great. Uh, next question is from Neha Kalra, and she asks, Does hot yoga really help in losing weight? Because you sweat so much and you're dehydrated, it could be water loss and mind weight loss. Yeah. Uh, hatha yoga. Uh, see, hatha yoga. Um, hatha. See, everything originates from hatha yoga. Hatha. Uh, if you look at the word, it means the sun and the moon. Okay, the balance between the sun and the moon. Now, people choose to take, uh, you know, the teachings of Hatha Yoga and make them into Power Yoga. People choose to take the teachings of Hatha Yoga and, call, and make them into some special kind of yoga. Or I could I could take the teachings and make them Pragya, pragya Yoga. Or I could, you know, call them uh, Hot Yoga or, you know, anything. But, but basically, 
uh, hatha yoga is your basic uh, you know set of postures and if you are practicing those postures the traditional postures that are there in the scriptures we have doc these these uh, scriptures are documented we have documents for this if you're practicing that and you're sweating uh, believe me it is not just water weight that you're losing um, it is a lot of toxins that are coming out you are building muscle with that also you're building a lot of strength with that also uh, I think we have a couple of questions about uh, from the ladies about weight loss, specifically in the thigh area. So what yeah. would you recommend? Yeah, so again, you know, a lot of Virabhadrasana, a lot of chair pose. And learn how to do the chair pose properly. Um, uh, the chair pose is the Utkatasana basically. And, and actually sit on a chair and then remove the chair from underneath you. And, uh, and, th and that's the best way of learning the chair pose. Sit as though you're sitting on the chair and remove the chair and then you see how uh, intensely your thighs start to work. That is, you know, the, the one thing that you really need to do uh, if you want to tone up your thighs. Along with that, because that's strength building, uh, what you want to do is stretch also. So again, any forward fold, whether it's just one leg or both legs um, that you're reaching forward to, um, these are the things that you need to do. And as a follow up question to that for me, how long would you recommend you hold, uh, hold a particular pose a for it to be effective? Yeah, um, so we recommend two minutes. So that's what you, you want to aim for, two minutes with slow breathing. Um, uh, so the breathing is a really important, it's very important, the breathing. Um, if you're breathing really fast and very shallow breathing and you're holding it for five minutes, it's not really effective. Um, because oxygen is not really penetrating the, the lobes of the lungs that we want it to penetrate. If you hold it for two minutes with proper slow breathing, long breathing, actually feeling the stretch, an uninterrupted stretch, that is more effective. So two minutes is what we recommend. Okay. Uh, next question is from Jayan, and he says he has lower back pain. What are the asanas to avoid? Lower back pain. And what asanas to avoid? Okay. Um, find a good teacher, and there are no asanas that you need to avoid. Okay. So uh, this is this is a myth. Okay. Uh, if you do Iyengar yoga, for instance, Iyengar yoga, you you we do all kinds of forward bends, twists, lateral twists, all uh, lateral bends, everything. It is a myth that if you have a lower back problem, you should not bend forward. You must know how to bend forward, and then you will be able to bend forward. Okay, we have seven minutes left, guys. Please just shoot your questions in. Okay, yeah. Our uh, next question is from Neha, and she wants to know what's the difference between power yoga and regular yoga. Power yoga, um, so power yoga is not one of those traditional forms of yoga. It's something that new that, that has come up, um, and it's great for weight loss. But the difference is just that regular yoga might focus a lot on asana, and this is more dynamic. So it's the same asana, but they're doing it dynamically. In a, in a regular yoga class, regular is also a term that I use very loosely because there is nothing regular, you know. There's Iyengar yoga, Ashtan yoga, Vikram, there's so many different kinds of yoga. But the only difference would be the pace. So a power yoga class would be just a lot faster, uh, you know, going up to 108 student amistad once a week or something. Um, and a regular yoga class would would focus more on the asana as well. Okay, great. I think that brings us to the end of the program uh, okay. for today. All right. Uh, guys, I hope that you have really enjoyed it. We've really enjoyed doing it. And um, yeah, this is th this is something that we're looking forward to doing a lot more. Leave us your feedback um, yeah. on, on the page, on the Heather Yeah, Yoga leave page. us your feedback on uh, down below again. We're happy to receive feedback from you here. Uh, you can also write into us at support at healthifyme.com with your feedback. Um, and please download our app from the iOS store and the Google Play store. Until 2 o'clock today, for all our viewers, remember you have the, you can avail a 30% discount code on all our Health of Me plans. The code is YOGA30, that's Y-O-G-A-3-0. Just download our app, enter the code, and get the 30% off just for today until 2 o'clock. Yeah. So that brings us to the end of this program. Thank you so much for joining us. We're doing two more um, hangouts over the course of this week. The yeah. next one coming up is on Thursday with another one of our fitness trainers, Saravanan. And he's going to talk about something that a lot of people resolve to do this year, which is running marathons. So join us, same time, same place. Um, we'll send you the link again. The next one is going to be by Roshni, who introduced Pragya earlier on. She's yeah. going to be covering fitness, how to get started on workouts and fitness in 2016. Also at the same time on Saturday. So join us then. Till then, stay healthified and we'll see you soon. Bye. All right.